So we switched to a thing called ThingDB, <laughs> and it's still called, uh, I think it's still called TDB in the Reddit code. So if you find any code that's called TDB or TDB2, I think, this is the second version of the ThingDB that I wrote at some point, this is what it's referring to. Instead of having a table that looked like this, a link table with a bunch of different columns on it for different things, we would instead do something like this. We'd have a table that just had a couple properties on it, and a couple properties that everything had. Let me see if I can remember these things. Everything has a score, an author, and a date. There might be a few other fields, like ups and downs, kind of encapsulated in score. But basically, everything, whether it's a link, whether it's a comment, whether it's a subreddit, anything has these fixed columns. It's not useful for all of them. It was pretty common enough. This was called the thing table. And then we had a separate table that every data type had called the data table. And the data table basically had three columns. It had the thing ID, which thing are we referring to, and it had a key and a value. So for a particular data type, for a link, for example, a link might be represented like this. We'd have an entry in the thing table. It might have a score of five, and of course it has an ID, one, an author of zero, that was my user ID, a date when it was submitted, and then it may have a data table. It may have a bunch of rows in the data table. So it would have one row that would be like thing ID one equal to URL, and then another row, thing ID one title. And so for every property of a thing that wasn't common across all of the things, we would have a row in the data table. And these are actually different database tables, and they could be on different machines. This allowed us to add features much quicker, because if we wanted to add a new data type to links, you would just the new links would start getting that new row. We wouldn't have to go fiddle around with adding it for all the old links. We could just keep in our code the difference if a link doesn't have this property, pretend it has a default value. And this was really cool. It allows us to add all sorts of features without having to get the data types right way in advance. And it also allowed us to add all these new data types. For example, down the road, we'd add subreddits. So users can make their own kind of categories, their own reddits, and that's just a thing. And so it made our development process a lot simpler. And then I wrote this whole layer that would kind of map our Python objects to these data tables.